Welcome to Da Headlines from Li Wei Tai. Thank you for joining us. In today's lineup, Siji's scholarship program continues to give underprivileged children a chance at an education, this time for over 200 students in Penang, Malaysia. In Ireland, Siji volunteers hand out food and blankets to the homeless to help give them a better and warmer night's sleep. Later in our regular feature on Taiwan's traditional trades, we meet a craftsman who is very passionate about the ancient Chinese art of cochin pottery. For several years now, city volunteers in Malaysia's Penang have been handing out scholarship funds to support students from poor families. At the latest scholarship award ceremony, city volunteers also put in a session in the program where the student aid recipients were given an opportunity to show their love and gratitude to their parents. Accompanied by their parents, students arrive for the scholarship ceremony where they will receive city's tuition support. Prior to today, volunteers first visited every student who was recommended by the principal for the scholarship. With a sincere bow and a cup of tea, these youngsters show their gratitude towards their parents. Dear mom and dad, please give our children a warm hug and tell them you will always love them. <laughs> I am a single mother, and I hope my child will be filial when he grows up. Life is difficult, but with help from Tsiji, 211 underprivileged students are given the opportunity to have a brighter future. I hope you will become an outstanding engineer because that is his dream. I really look forward to that day. I hope she becomes someone useful and that she has a kind heart and help others in need. Every student is grateful and vows to pay the love forward one day. Also from Malaysia, the next story introduces us to one more student who was able to go to school thanks to Tsiji's intervention. After high school, 17-year-old Hong Zhuwen from Kuala Lumpur couldn't continue to study either because his family couldn't afford the school or he was rejected due to his disability. However, after his story was aired on the Dai channel at the beginning of this year, the principal of Mines E-Able Training Institute was so moved by the young man's desire to learn, she enrolled him in her school on full scholarship. Today is the day dreams come true for 17-year-old Hong Zhu Wen of Kuala Lumpur. He is finally able to continue his education. The path to finding continuing education for Zhu Wen after high school was not an easy one to walk. His grandmother, Lin Lan, found out that most schools do not accept disabled students, and they were on the verge of giving up his dream. After finally finding a school, I was told that they don't take kids in wheelchairs. This is what they said. So we had no choice but to return home. Then the city brothers and sisters helped me to continue searching, and they found this one. Facing difficulties, city volunteers do not give up and finally finding a place suitable for Zhu Wen at the Minds e Able Training Institute in their computer training program. In the future, if he has the ability to take care of himself, he can share his story with others. Although he's disabled, he still has the power to inspire others like him. Under Tsiji's guidance, he understands conservation. He knows to be grateful, so I think a child who shows appreciation knows how to use his energy in a positive light. Why not give him an opportunity to help him learn? This is the first time Zhu Wen is leaving grandmother, and she tries to hold back her tears as she continues to give him reminders about how to take care of himself. <laughs> Even if Zhu Wen has to work twice as hard as other young people, he won't give up because each learning opportunity is an opportunity earned. 
Moving to Vietnam, in the third part of our report on the work of Taiwan's Zhi Shan Foundation in the country, we travel to Quang Binh Province, one of Vietnam's poorest areas with a chronic shortage of medical personnel. One girl has a dream to change that, and her name is Le Thi Tao Ni, who recently tested into the local medical school. It has been her Taiwanese sponsor who helped support her study. And recently, Taiwanese sponsor traveled to Vietnam again to give encouragement to the hardworking girl. This is Quang Binh Province, located in central Vietnam. It is one of the country's poorest areas. However, at Quang Tri Secondary Medical School, one student has refused to allow the difficult circumstances of her life and environment get her down. When I came last year, I asked her what plan she had for the future. She said at the time that she only wanted to find work quickly, since her family's economic situation was precarious. Although Wu visits when he can, most of the communication between him and Le Thi Tao Ni are through letters that are translated by the Zhi Shan Foundation. In one of Tao Ni's last letters, Wu Weichen received a pleasant surprise. I got a letter from the Zhi Shan Foundation saying that she had tested into medical school. I thought that she must be very determined and hoped that she would continue forward with her studies. Hearing the news, I decided to come and encourage her. And as it turns out, Zisan also asked if I could come. This visit is due to Taoni's tenacity. Le Thi Tao Ni, who lost her father when young, was raised by her grandmother, mother and older sister. A visit to their home shows a family that makes less than 80 US dollars per month, struggling with poverty, and one in which a male figure is entirely absent. The setup of Le Thi Tao Ni's home is extremely simple, as you can see from her bed. In order to save electricity, she studies here in front of the door so that she can take advantage of the sunlight. Her desk is also extremely small, and it is here that she has studied hard for years. She has finally tested into a dream school, which will allow her one day to be a doctor and help her family get out of poverty. Having never met her father, thanks to her sponsor Wu Weichen, Tao Ni finally has a father figure in her life. Wearing a watch given to her by Wu, Tao Ni, hearing that winters are cold in Taiwan, presents him with a handmade scarf, which Wu wears despite the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Tawny's grandmother is old and her mother, who is sick, can only make infrequent trips to nearby Laos for work. In order to pay for her daughter's tuition, her mother has had to borrow money. Currently, Tawny studies in the day and at night works shifts in the hospital. Her frail body cannot withstand the workload, but she refuses to give up. After graduating, if I wanted to pursue a higher degree, I will have to first work for two years. After two years, I can continue to study in medical school. As it comes time to leave, the sponsor father and daughter work arm in arm. Wei and hopes that Le Thi Tao Ni will overcome the challenges ahead, realize her dreams, and make the world a more beautiful place in doing so. The effects of Europe's economic crisis have reached Dublin, the capital of Ireland, as the number of homeless people has increased dramatically. Recently, city volunteers handed out blankets and food to help those without shelter better endure the chilling temperature. The scenery besides this river in Dublin, the capital of Ireland, is one of beauty and serenity. But to city volunteers, what they see are the effects of Europe's economic crisis. Ireland's unemployment rate has been on the increase since 2008 and even reached 14.2% this April, ranking the fifth highest in Europe. 
the number of homeless people are also on the increase, a fact that worries the volunteers. And he said he doesn't need anything and he actually referred us to the other one and, and he was very happy for, for the things that we gave him. Volunteers spent nearly an hour walking around the city to hand out blankets and food to the needy, hoping to bring love and warmth in times of despair. In northern Jakarta, Indonesia, an appreciation ceremony was held at the Tsiji School, where young students gave thanks to kitchen volunteers who prepared their daily meals for the past year. Let's take a look. At the Tsiji School in Jakarta, Indonesia, the students perform a song in sign language to show appreciation for the kitchen volunteers' hard work this year because a simple thank you is not enough. When I started preparing lunch for the students, I'd say to them, thank you. At that time, they didn't understand and would just stare back at us. So we taught them that when you receive your food, you have to say thank you, but they refused. Now they know to say thank you. Sometimes when I forget to say it, they will bring their plates to me and say, thank you, auntie, I'm grateful. It makes me proud. In a reversal of roles, the students take on the role of kitchen volunteer and deliver their token of love to the adults. These cakes are a small token of appreciation to show the volunteers that we appreciate them because they take care of our children. So in return, we want to take care of them. If the school is like a family, then the kitchen volunteers are the mothers, who are always concerned about whether students are fed well. For the volunteers, seeing the students mature is like seeing their own children mature. Eating only 80% full and sparing the remaining 20% to help the less fortunate is a campaign that Master Jin Yin started, and many of her disciples are doing that exactly. We now go to southern Taiwan to see how several city volunteers are putting their compassion to action. Using a handheld duster to first dust off excess dirt, then wipe down with a rinsed dry towel, and voila, this car is cleaned without going through a car wash. We put forth a little bit of manual labor and save a little bit of money to help the hungry and the poor. I think that's quite meaningful. Getting your car washed outside will cost about three US dollars. Since we saved that amount, I'm donating a dollar to the water coin bank. Arriving at the home of Tsiji volunteer Tai Cheng Gen, one realizes he is missing several light bulbs in his lighting fixtures. It came with six light bulbs, but I figure three is already enough. We don't turn on the main light in the living room, it's just for decoration. We hire someone to make this and install a pipe here. This area has been redone. Tai also installs a pipe that connects to the roof. It is for rain collection. When it rains, we can collect about 400 liters worth of water. This washing machine was bought 11 years ago. The collected rainwater is used for washing laundry, household cleaning and flushing the toilets. Not one drop is wasted. If everyone eats one less mouthful of rice, a lot of rice can be saved in a year. So if everyone saves, we will have the power to help a lot more people. If everyone practices eating 80% full and using the remaining 20% to help the less fortunate, the world will surely become a more beautiful place. In our featured series on Taiwan's traditional trays, today we're going to show you cochin ceramic figurines that decorate the roof ridge of temples. As colorful cochin ware takes a long time to make and involves many complicated steps, most of the craftsmen have left the trade. But we meet one cochin artist from Inga in New Taipei City who loves this art more than food and sleep. <laughs> Yeah. 
coming to Ohio and Tenby. The making of Cochin ceramics is very complicated. You start with nothing, with just a bowl of earth, then you turn it into a piece of art. It takes a long time, and if one thing goes wrong, then you will end up with nothing. Back in the olden days, coach and ceramic figurines were a treasure of the Chinese imperial court. Thieves who appropriated them ran out of places to hide the loot and decided to put them on top of temple roofs. That was how coach and ceramics came about. My mother used to say to me, you will starve trying to make a business out of coaching ceramics, when we can't even put food on the table. She wondered why I was buying clay instead of rice. I quit for a few years and almost gave up, but then I picked up where I left off because I just couldn't let it go. It is my passion to make ceramics. I'm getting old, but when I lay my hands on clay, I can go without sleep for three days. I can tell you it's that undying passion for ceramics that is keeping me going. He uses his coarse hands, but delicate touch, to shape the ceramics. Whatever you do, put yourself into it. I thrive on clay. Before I work on it, this piece of earth is soft and nondescript. I sculpt the dragon into it to make it come alive. Then I make a bell to go with it. It looks fabulous, but it takes me at least 10 tries to even come near a perfect one. For Wu Liangbing, inspiration comes above his biological needs. There was this once when I lost all my ideas after I went to the toilet. It was serious. I shouldn't have gone to the loo at all. I didn't even want my children around me. I asked them to stay away. The master craftsman's third son, Wu Zhongchen, got into the Inga Vocational High School to study pottery so that he can carry on his father's work. My dad is getting old and he is the fifth generation ceramic maker in our family. I have two other brothers and I don't want to see the art ending with my father. I used to feel stressed working with my father because he's very strict and thought that he was being a pain by being so stern. But now I understand why it's so demanding because the work requires him to do so. He's not skilled enough to do the face. You need a very experienced artist to do that. The face is the key to the whole figurine. You don't want to turn a gentleman into a tragic lead. While his father creates historical figures, Wu Zhongchen tries his hand at popular manga characters. I've been wanting to do this for a while and tried several times. I've had two or three failed attempts. I won't comment on my child's work. I don't give criticism or compliments. I was never giving any feedback when I was young. Now young people just want to be reassured through compliments. But I want them to explore their work and come up with new ideas. Ignite your passion and bring fireworks to your life. 
Back to more Cixi news, in Singapore, the local office recently hosted a Cixin Faith Course sem seminar where Dharma Masters from Hualien Stingsa Abode were invited to give a lecture. Among the masters was Dharma Master De Rang, who helped establish Cixi's missions in the country before she became a nun. Needless to say, it was also a happy family reunion for the country's volunteers. Before she became a nun, Dharma Master Dezhan of Hualien's Jinsi abode had already built a strong bond with Singapore's Cixi volunteers. Together, they helped establish Cixi's missions in the country. At the time, Master Durong hadn't become a nun just yet, so we were very close, just like brothers and sisters. We worked very well together. This is like a big family celebration. Everyone here is immersed in Dharma joy. The last time the young master was in Singapore was for the inauguration of the local Jinsi Hall. Now seven years later, after the recent conclusion of the Buddha Day ceremony, she has seen how the volunteers have grown. A person has to face 20 challenges, so what did Master Zhen Yin teach us to overcome them? To be devoted, right? I believe all of you have proved this with your actions. Master De Zhan also brought a personal message from Master Zhen Yin for the volunteers. When your heart turns, so does the Dharma wheel. The state of our heart affects our perception of the world and determines our actions. Though people have grown older and the surroundings have changed, Singapore's volunteers remain steadfast on the city path. Tainan Cixi volunteer Cai Yuju had been devoted to the NGO's recycling work for more than 20 years. Sadly, the 78-year-old senior was injured in a car accident in early May and passed away this week. To honor her wish, Cai's family decided to donate her body to medical science. Jinsi abode masters and Cixi volunteers sincerely chant Buddhist scriptures for 78-year-old Cai Yuzhu, who passed away on Tuesday morning from a vehicle accident that had occurred in early May. To fulfill her wish, the only woman's family is donating her body to Hualien Cixi Hospital. My auntie asked my mom if she wanted to donate her body, and she said yes. This happened more than 10 years ago. Cai Yuzhu, the mother of Master De Mai, was deeply moved by her daughter's devotion to Cixi. Thus, she has also been sorting recyclables at the local environmental station for over 20 years. Last year, she took part in the Water Repentance Sign Language Musical, and after that, she helped set up a recycling area at the Tainan Anping Liaison Office. The one built with PET bottles is filled with her wisdom. Cai Yuzhu set an example for all through her devotion to safeguarding the planet in life. In death, she also contributed to the medical field as a silent mentor. Finally today, we go to the Queen Elizabeth Stadium in Wan Chai, Hong Kong, where the local Cixi chapter held a concert to acknowledge the contribution of all those who served with Cixi to help make a difference throughout the world. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Da Headlines. Goodbye. <laughs>